Hey, let's talk about length contraction. So what you see here is a typical problem where we have to solve for the contracted length of an object moving near the speed of light. But before I give you the equation and just say, hey, let's plug in some numbers, let's walk through the derivation of this equation. And as you can see, the math is not that bad, but we really need to focus in on what are these two different values? What is this capital L and what is this L naught? Now, a typical picture that's shown to students is the following. You've got a baseball in four different speeds, at rest, at 50% the speed of light, at 90% the speed of light, and then 99% the speed of light. And you can see that from the perspective of an outside observer, this baseball compresses or contracts along its direction of motion and gets thinner and thinner and thinner. This is consistent with experiment. This is not just something we've made up. This is consistent with experiment. It's very, very valuable uh, in science. So let's go ahead and let's derive where this length contraction equation comes from. Now, when we derive the equation for length contraction, we're going to start out with a diagram. And this diagram has Earth on one side, and then let's take our nearest star, Proxima Centauri, which I've uh, abbreviated as PC here. Now, the distance from Earth to Proxima Centauri is four light years, which means it takes light four years to travel from Proxima Centauri to Earth. Okay? Now, we've got a pair of twins, Benny and Jenny. Benny stays on Earth. Very boring, right? But Jenny is going to travel to Proxima Centauri and back at 99% of the speed of light. And our question is, do they agree on how much time passes, and do they agree on how much distance each one traveled? Okay? To answer this question, I suggest that we make a table. Okay? Now, this table is going to be so important, we're going to refer back to it a few different times. And I suggest that you take up a good half a page with this table. We're going to start out with a column header here that looks like this. Okay, we're going to break this up into three columns. So this is one, and then two, and then three. In the middle, we're going to write Benny. And then in the third column, we're going to write Jenny. And the two things that we want to measure here are, I'm going to take this space and I'm going to cut it in half with a line like this. Okay. The two things that we want to measure here are first, we're going to write measures time to Proxima Centauri and back. So we're going to look at the time that Benny and Jenny measure to Proxima Centauri and back. And we're also going to look at um, measures the distance from Earth to Proxima Centauri and back. Okay, so our goal is to fill out this table. And when we fill out this table, we'll have the complete picture of who measures what time and who measures what distance. Okay, it's going to be valuable to recall the definition of proper time. So in our video on time dilation, we defined proper time as delta t naught, the amount of time between two events that occur at the same location. Now, the events that we're talking about are the ship departing Earth and then arriving at Proxima Centauri. So the question is, who is measuring those events in the same location in their reference frame? Now, for Benny, the departure from Earth and the arrival at Proxima Centauri are definitely two different locations in Benny's reference frame. But for Jenny, she's measuring those times when she's on the ship, and she stays on the ship the whole time. So it, from her perspective, she measured the time when she left, she measured the time when she arrived, but those were measured at the same location in her reference frame, which is on the ship. So we know that Jenny is going to measure the, let me use a different color here, Jenny's going to measure the proper time, delta t naught. Okay? We're going to calculate this time in a second. If Jenny measures the proper time, then that means that Benny is going to measure the dilated time. And the delta t is the dilated time. Okay? Let's go ahead and let's calculate these uh, time values. Okay? 
So we're going to come back to this table. Don't abandon this table because we're coming right back. All right. So in order to find delta t and delta t naught, here's what we're going to say. Let's find delta t and delta t naught. Okay. So let's look at Benny. To Benny, what Benny sees is that speed, as we know, is distance over time, right? So when Benny measures his time, which is going to be the dilated time delta t, he sees that if we solve for this uh, delta t, we can rewrite this equation. We can say, look, he observes her moving at 99% the speed of light, so we can write that as 0 0.99 um, c is equal to the distance that he perceives. Now, from his perspective, she travels four light years and then another four light years to come back. So that's going to be eight light years. Okay? And the time that he measures is this delta t. So if we solve for this delta t now, we're going to get delta t is equal to the eight light years divided by 0 0.99. Now, the speed of light assumes that you can travel one light year in one year. So if you're traveling at 99% of the speed of light, that means you can travel 0.99 light years in the same year. Okay? So now, if we divide this out, 8 divided by 0.99, we're going to get 8.08. .08. And the unit here, if you take light years and divide it by light years per year, the light years will cancel and you're going to get in the numerator years. So he's going to measure a dilated time of 8.08 .08 years. Okay, Let's look at Jenny now. To Jenny, we know that the equation for time dilation is delta t equals delta t naught divided by the square root of 1 minus v squared over c squared. So now if we want to solve for this delta t naught, we're going to say, okay, delta t naught is going to equal delta t times the square root of 1 minus v squared over c squared. Uh, we know delta t is 8.08 .08 .08 years, so we can plug that in. So this is going to be equal to 8.08 .08 times the square root of 1 minus v squared, which is 0.99c. I'm going to write this like this, in parentheses, 0.99c quantity squared divided by c squared. Okay, so I know that's kind of scrunched there, but 0.99c quantity squared. Now, the reason I had to put the parentheses around that quantity was that when I simplify this, I'm going to write 8.08 .08 times the square root of 1 minus, using that distributive property for exponents, we get 0 0.99 squared times c squared all over c squared. And what you notice here is, yes, indeed, the c squareds will cancel. Okay, So bye-bye c squared. And if you put this now into your calculator, 8.08 .08 times the square root of 1 minus 0.99 squared, you will get 1.14 years. So whereas Benny measured the dilated time of 8.08 .08 years, Jenny only measured 1.14 years. So Jenny will have aged one year during the trip, whereas Benny will have aged eight years. Okay, very, very interesting. So let's go ahead and return to that all-important table that I shared with you. So in our table, let's go ahead and put the times. So Benny measured a dilated time of delta t is equal to 8.08 .08 years. And Jenny measured a delta t naught, a proper time, of 1.14 years. Okay, so now we have the times that are measured by Benny and Jenny. So the question is, if they don't agree on the times, will they agree on the distances traveled? Let's find out. 
to answer that question, what we would like to do here is we would like to first define a new quantity. Okay? The new quantity is called the proper length L0. Okay? The proper length L0 is the distance between two points as measured by someone who is at rest with respect to both points. Okay? So if the two points are Earth and Proxima Centauri, who remains at rest with respect to both points? Is it Jenny? Well, she measured the proper time, so maybe she measures the proper distance as well, or the proper length as well. But is Jenny at rest with respect to Earth and Proxima Centauri? Unfortunately, no. She's in motion with respect to both those points. So then, how about Benny? Benny's on Earth. He remains on Earth. So that means he's at rest with respect to Earth, and he's also not moving with respect to Proxima Centauri. So Benny, in fact, does measure the proper length. The proper length. L0. Okay? So the question is, how much proper length does he measure? Well, he says, look, Jenny, you went four light years, and then you came back four light years. So that's a total distance of eight light years. So this L0 is going to be equal to eight light years. That's pretty straightforward. Okay. Well, what about for Jenny? What does Jenny measure? To answer that question, we've got to ask another question. And the question is this. From Benny's perspective, how is Jenny moving? From Benny's perspective, when Jenny's moving towards Proxima Centauri, Jenny is moving at V equals 0.99C, that's 99% of the speed of light, away from Earth. So Benny sees Jenny traveling away from Earth. Okay? What does Jenny see? Jenny's on her spaceship. Does she see herself moving? No, from her perspective, she's at rest with respect to her, her reference frame, her spaceship. So what does she see? When she looks back at Earth, she sees Earth moving away from her at 99% of the speed of light. So from Jenny's perspective, Earth is the one that's moving Earth is moving at 0.99c away from her. Okay? Who's right? Benny says, Jenny, you're moving at 99% of the speed of light away from me. And Jenny says, no, 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 I'm at rest. Earth is moving at 99% of the speed of light away from me. So who's right? Guess what? They both are. They both agree on the speed. Okay? They both agree on the speed that each other is moving. So what does that mean? What that means is that we can look at this speed and we can say if they both measure the same speed, then maybe we can set those two speeds equal to each other. So check this out. First, though, we have to define a new quantity. Let capital L equal the distance from... Earth to Proxima Centauri um, as measured by Jenny. Okay. So that's going to be capital L. So let's look at Benny's perspective. For Benny, Benny says, look, you're moving at speed V, Jenny. You're moving at speed V equals distance over time. How much distance does he measure? Well, we said he measures the proper distance, L0. How much time does it take in his reference frame? We said that he measures the dilated time, delta T. Okay? So from his perspective, this is the equation for velocity. For Jenny... measures a distance L. We've defined this to be the distance that she measures. And she measures the proper time, delta T naught. Okay? Now, if these are both equal to V, 
then what we can do is say, by the transitive property, we can set these equal to each other. So one way to look at it is like this. This is V, right? On one hand, we've got Benny. Benny says the speed V is the proper length divided by the dilated time. For Jenny, this speed V is equal to the this new length, which we're going to define in a second, divided by the uh, the proper time. So proper length divided by dilated time equals uh, this is called the contracted length, but hold on on that divided by uh, the proper time. Okay. Now because this delta T is a dilated time, this is a larger delta T. Okay. And in order for this speed to be the same, a larger time has to be associated with a larger distance. Whereas for Jenny, she measures the proper time, which is the smaller delta T. And in order for this equation to be balanced, if you have a larger L divided by a larger delta T, and on the other side you've got a smaller delta T in the denominator, that means that to keep this balanced, we need to have a smaller length in the numerator. And guess what? This L, because it's a smaller length, is called the contracted length. So let's define. L is equal to the contracted length. So whenever you see capital L by itself in the context of a relativity problem, this is the contracted length. That's the shorter length. Okay. So now we're in excellent shape, but we haven't yet derived the equation. So let's take this equation right here, L naught over delta T equals L over delta T naught, and let's solve this equation for L. Okay. So let's go ahead and let's write, okay, the equation that we have is L naught over delta T equals L over delta T naught. Right? Okay, let's solve this for L. So maybe what we're going to do is multiply uh, both sides by delta T naught. So then we get L is equal to L naught delta T naught over delta T. Now, you might recall that delta T is the dilated time, and the dilated time has an equation that looks like this. We're going to replace this dilated time, delta T, with the equation for dilated time, which is delta T naught divided by the square root of 1 minus V squared over C squared. Okay? So, what we've done is we've replaced this delta T with the equation for the dilated time, right here. So, we all know that if you take an expression, this numerator, and divide it by a fraction, down here, this is all one big fraction. If you divide by a fraction, it's the same thing as multiplying by the reciprocal. So we can rewrite this as L naught delta T naught times the reciprocal, which is square root 1 minus V squared over C squared over delta T naught. Now what's going to happen to these delta T naughts? They're going to cancel each other out. So these delta T naughts cancel out, and we're left with the big equation that we've been searching for all this time. L equals L naught square root 1 minus V squared over C squared. Okay, let me write that nice and big. This is the contracted length equation. L equals L naught square root 1 minus V squared over C squared. Let's go ahead put a rectangle around this, let's star it, and perhaps even smiley face it. All right, good deal. All that's left is to do an example. So let's do an example. Ooh, 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 ooh. You know what we haven't done? Before we do our example, we haven't calculated the, um, the contracted length 
for jetty. All right, so let's go ahead and let's calculate the contracted length for Jenny. So Jenny's going to measure this contracted length. Contracted length. Oops. L. That's what Jenny measures. And so if we calculate this, we can do it uh, right here in this space. It shouldn't be too much work. We're going to say, okay, this L that she measures is going to be equal to the proper length, which was 8, times the square root of 1 minus 0.99c squared. Okay. Now, I already know that that's going to simplify to 0.99 squared c squared over c squared. Okay, the c squareds will cancel, and if you take eight times the square root of one minus 0.99 squared, you will get 1.13 light years. So whereas Benny said, Jenny, you measured, you, you, you traveled eight light years. Jenny says, no, I only traveled 1.13 light years, which makes sense because Benny measured a whole lot of time, and for him, it took her a whole lot of uh, distance when she traveled that large amount of time. But for Jenny, she only measured a short amount of time. So that means that she measured a short distance that she was traveling. Okay? Wow. Excellent. So all that's left is to do a nice example. All right. Here is our example. An alien spaceship travels at 90% the speed of light. An Earth observer measures that the spaceship travels 1,600 meters into Earth's atmosphere. So what distance did the spaceship travel from the alien's perspective? All right. Well, we know the equation is going to be L equals L naught square root 1 minus B squared over C squared. And we know that we have a distance of 1,600 meters here. The question is, which distance is this? Okay. The Earth observer is at rest with respect to where the alien spaceship starts and where the alien spaceship ends. So because the Earth observer is at rest, the Earth observer is going to measure this as the proper length. Okay? So this L naught here, because the Earth observer is at rest with respect to those two points, this is measured by the Earth observer. This is 1,600 meters. Okay, so we're going to say, okay, this is 1,600 times the square root of 1 minus, and then for V squared, we got 90% the speed of light, so it's going to be 0.9 C quantity squared over C squared. All right, well, we know that this can be written as 1 minus, and if we already know, we can, we can skip a little bit of work here. We're going to have a c squared here, and we have a c squared there. Those c squared are going to cancel. So we're going to have a 0.9 squared with no more c squares. So if we now put this into our calculator, we're going to get a distance of 697 meters. So from the perspective of the alien, the distance traveled was 697 meters. All right, and that represents a typical example um, from length contraction. So I hope this was helpful to you, and thanks for watching.